This video is part number two of this like little Anki series and what I'm going to be talking about is the add-ons. So if you didn't know what an add-on is, it's basically like a little extension that you can use when you're using Anki on a laptop. So for example, a Mac or like a Windows computer thing. Unfortunately, these add-ons aren't very accessible for when you're using it on your phone. This is not my phone, this is my iPad. But your phone or your iPad. But I think it's more worthwhile if you have a laptop. So if you don't have a laptop, that's okay. You can still use Anki. But I'd say maybe click off the video. I mean, you can still find it useful if you decide to get laptops. So I guess I shouldn't. I shouldn't tell you guys to go away, but please stay. There's a variety of different add-ons that you can use. And to be honest, there's way too many add-ons out there. So I've only got six that I use at the moment. And this might change um, over the next few months, depending on what I decide to discover. Who is running outside my flat? Okay, dokie, okay. here you can see my very, very messy computer. So this is like my homepage. Um, and to find where the add-ons are, Basically, you have to go on to tools and then add-ons and I'll show you the ones that I have. I have a variety of add-ons and honestly, it's a little bit life-changing, so I would recommend this as well. One of them is add table. For the longest time, I struggled so, so much to make tables on Anki and honestly, this was so, so satisfying. The next one is control audio. Sometimes when I'm revising, I speak out loud and that helps to just reinforce the information. Um, it's something that my dad always tells me to do. He's always like, guy, I talk out loud and it will help remember the information. He doesn't have an accent like that, but it's the best I could do. It's not something that I did in first and second year, but when I got to third year, there's a lot of management in third year. And to be honest, I find it quite boring to learn just because there's different steps and different categories of things and different ways in which you can manage one single patient. Sounds cool, sounds fun, but I find it very, very long to learn, especially of loads of conditions. And I thought, hmm, maybe if I record myself doing a little segment of like a mini lecture, then it will kind of be more exciting to learn. And I don't have to sit and read like pages and pages of the management. And I think this is more valid when you get into your clinical years because there's lots of different pathways and stuff. So sometimes listening to yourself talking about it is just a way to help remember it as well. The next one is countdown to events. So in this case, it's exams. And um, this is just a random one that I found and it's basically like um, a countdown timer, but it's in terms of days. Nothing exciting, it's just to remind you if you've got an exam coming up, just to kind of scare you how many days that you have. This is the one that's very, very common. And this is the heat map. It basically tells you how much revision that you've done each day. You can even hover on it. Oh, can I hover on it? And it tells you how many cards that you reviewed. I mean, yesterday I did 29 cards. This was 87 cards. So the darker the color, the more cards that you revise. And I'll show you how, when it was really, really crazy. During exam period, I was doing my flashcards every day. And I think the most I've ever done is, honestly, the most cards I've ever done is 772 in a day. And that was peak exam time. So. That's why that happened. I'm not usually like that. Usually I do like 50 cars a day. Another one that I found is the mini format pack. Now basically this just allows you to do bullet points, numbering, do indentations as well. And also these like horizontal lines to separate text. So I found this is more useful once again when I do like longer questions when it's like management and stuff to separate maybe medical management from surgical management so that I can differentiate between the two. Because before I was like copying and pasting bullet points and oh my god, it was taking too long. So I was really excited when I found this add-on. This one's really cool. Pop-up dictionary beta. I don't know why it's called that. For example, if I click on, so now I've clicked on the word rectum. So if I double click on it, it basically shows me other flashcards where I've also mentioned the word rectum. And if you want to do a quick like bus stop business and you want to stop and you want to just quickly go through some things about the rectum because you've forgotten it, there are just questions that pop up. And it's really cool because of the function of Anki. It allows you to identify the different flashcards there as well. So I think that's quite cool. I don't do this all the time, but it's usually when I'm really confused about condition. So I'm like, let me just stop and then review the other flashcards I have on that condition as well. And I think that brings me to the end of this very, very short video because Anki is a bit confusing to use when you get first get started. Once you get into the swing of things, once you've formed your habits, once you've done your reps for your brain, these add-ons just make your life just a little bit easier when you are trying to create the flashcards um, and it saves a lot of time as well. So if you have more questions about Anki, once again, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video as well. Make sure you give this comment um, a like. Okay. 
make uh, sorry make sure you give this video a like comment and then make sure you like this video give it uh, make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because there's lots more content coming soon and